Coming up on show 785, we love a new EV going into production, and as of today, Mazda starts production of their brand new MX-30 full EV. Stick around, and I'll tell you more. Plus on the podcast today, the first Shanghai-made Tesla Model 3 long range just got delivered. Well, we see a teaser video of the GMC Hummer, and it's got some interesting roof panels. A competitor to Tesla Storage, North Vault and Vattenfall are partnering up together, and GM are talking about a 600-mile EV being viable. Well, those stories and many more coming up on the podcast today. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you're listening in the world, welcome to EV News Daily for Thursday, 21st of May. My name is Martin Lee, going through every EV story so you don't have to. Well, today, Mazda started production officially of their first ever all-electric car, the Mazda MX-30. And it will be entering the European market towards the end of this year, UK in early 2021. No word about the market launch in the US, though, says Motor One. It is available to put a deposit down or at least configure an order in Europe. And that makes sense the UK date is further back because I can't find it on the Mazda.co.uk website. No mention of it, no big hoopla song and dance about Mazda's electrification. And that there lies in perhaps a concern of mine in terms of a brand like Mazda coming to the market with a full EV. It's from a standing start. They've got no history of making full electric cars in most buyers' minds. And so when they think Mazda, they might not necessarily think electric. Now, sure, Mazda have got some access to some really clever hybrid technology. Of course, they can look up to Toyota for that. However, and actually, you know, Mazda have been making some hybrid stuff as well. However, in terms of a full battery electric vehicle, attaching the Mazda word to it, it's going to be new for many buyers. It's a compact crossover SUV, which is kind of a mashup of of things that seems to be popular at the moment. Uh, nothing too big, but also that SUV crossover styling and shape. It's got a load of tech, but it needs to have for the price. It's going to be made in Hiroshima in Japan. The first edition is going to have a windscreen projecting head-up display. It's going to have an eight-way adjustable seating system. It's got seven-inch uh, digital display, uh, leather inside, chrome trim in Germany starting at uh, €33,500. Germany has a 19% VAT rate. Here we have a 20% VAT rate. It's going to cost £27,000, but of course we get £3,000 off uh, EVs because of the government grant at the moment. Touch wood, sticking around. Here's the thing on the Mazda MX-30. From the outside, it looks unremarkable, but that is probably going to be the next phase of EVs that are coming anyway. Cars that just look like normal fossil cars, but happen to be EVs, which is right for some people and not what other people are looking at, or looking for, I should say. But it's got a 35 kilowatt hour battery. And that, in 2021, is a potential problem, an interesting proposition. It's going to have a range on the WLTP of 124 miles, that's 200 Ks. But look, real world, when it's cold and it's raining, it won't be 124 miles. And that is probably where maybe some of my concerns start to creep in a little bit with this. And I don't know if it would be unfair to call this a compliance car. Look, new regulations in Europe, all to do with car makers being fined over CO2 emissions of their fleets if they don't sell enough EVs mean that they all do have to bring EVs to market whether they want to or not. Does Mazda want to bring an EV to market? With a 35 kilowatt hour battery, you wouldn't be at fault for if you were scratching your head right now and being like, well, look, it's got a tiny, tiny battery. It's got a tiny, tiny range and it's going to cost me 30000 and if you're listening in the US, that's about $36,000, but it's difficult because we have VAT and, and incentives are different here. But still, that's a lot of money. And there are plenty of EVs in that area that are going to give you mm, food for thought. I'm being kind to Mazda here because I could, I could be mean. But whenever somebody comes with a full EV, you know, we've waited years for stories like this. I just want to spend a day congratulating Mazda 
for putting into production in Japan a fully electric car. That is great news. Will they sell many of them? Would you buy one? 124 miles of WLTP, which even then is a bit optimistic. EPA range would be like 110. Energy consumption is 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Uh, the battery pack, like I say, is, is 35 and a half kilowatt hours, made with prismatic cells, uh, 0 to 60, just under 10 seconds, top speed of 87 miles an hour. DC fast charging at 50 kilowatts. All of these specs sound to me about five years out of date. And when you look at the cutaways of the car, when you look at the exploded drawings and the diagrams that they've put online, of course, it reminds you that this is a combustion car manufacturer having to make EVs. And you, when you look at an EV that is custom made with the batteries on the flat floor, and then you look at a car where the batteries are stuffed here, the batteries are stuffed there, a little bump under the rear seats because the batteries are stuffed under the rear seats. Makes you wonder. Now, it's coming with a CCS uh, DC fast charging or CCS combo plug. That's interesting. Obviously, this is a Japanese manufacturer. Nissan being Japanese as well have always been pro Chadamo. Japan being generally pro Chadamo. Interesting they've gone with the CCS plug for this. But anyway... That's where I'll leave it. I'll pop a link in the show notes to some pictures if you want to see more. Congratulations to Mazda for coming to market with the MX-30. And I'd love to know from you, I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'd love to know your reaction whenever we get to talk about a brand new EV, uh, where you stand on the issue. I'm trying to give you the pros, I'm giving you the cons, I'm letting you make your mind up about this, and I'm sure it's not the last time we'll talk about it. Well, congratulations to the team in China, the Chinese-made, the Shanghai-made Tesla Model 3 Long Range, currently available in rear-wheel drive. And it differs from the imported Model 3s uh, with distinctive Chinese badging. Uh, it has a 77 kilowatt hour battery, fairly identical specs to the original US-made Model 3 Long Range Rear Wheel Drive that used to be on sale back in 2017-18, now discontinued. Of course, if I could get one, that would be the weapon of choice for me. It's all about range, 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 range. I don't need all-wheel drive. I don't need to have massive brake discs and uh, carbon fiber spoilers and track mode. It's all nice. They're all boys' toys, right, and girls' toys, but I don't need that. What, what everybody needs in an EV is range, range, range. So I wish they still sold this uh, that I could get my hands on, but you can in China. Current price of the Model 3 long range in China starts at uh, 344,000 RMB, about $48,000 after subsidies. So, congratulations to the first person to take delivery of their long-range Tesla Model 3 made in Shanghai. Uh, the cheaper one, by the way, is about 272,000 RMB, about $38,000 after subsidies. Uh, Tesla Shanghai looks like they're on track to lift production volume, and uh, I'm trying to work out what that number's going to be. I'll bring you that news on tomorrow's podcast, but it looks like more cars are being made in Shanghai as they come out of the COVID situation there. Well, today was supposed to be the day that GM took the wraps off the GMC Hummer. That's right. If you hadn't heard the news, the what used to be the Hum V, what started out life in the 80s as a, as a military vehicle, became the Hummer, very popular in the 90s and early noughties. And then, of course, you don't want to be driving a massive truck that has, what was the, was it 6 MPG or 8 MPG? Either way. It was right. It was the the right time for that car to die. GM think it's the right time to revive that car as a full EV, and the Hummer is back. It's a big old vehicle, and uh, you could argue does any, considering most vehicles are done, or well, commuting at least is done single occupancy. Does anybody need to be using that many resources to put into a single vehicle, but yeah, I'll let you argue that one out yourselves. Uh, according to Autoblog, we now have a teaser of the GMC Hummer. Um, the Hummer is going to have a uh, removable uh, roof panel. Actually, re removable roof panels. And it looks like there are four roof panels and a front T-bar that come out of the truck. And you can see what that looks like in the video that I'll pop in the show notes. Comparisons to a Jeep. Very obvious, actually. Uh, big displays in the front. Lots of um, real estate given over to big displays. So uh, looks like it's going to be a high-tech car as well. 
So here's a couple of companies teaming up to take energy storage to Tesla. And that's Northvolt and Vattenfall announced a new battery storage, a battery energy storage solution uh, that will provide zero emission alternatives to running diesel generators, uh, initially at remote mining sites, the Volt Pack. Uh, and if you're thinking that sounds similar to what Tesla do with things like their Powerwall, Power Pack, Mega Pack, yeah, the Volt Pack is a rugged, modular, lithium-ion battery system uh, which serves as a power supply solution to meet the energy and power requirements of different markets and scenarios. Uh, they're going to offer the battery first to, like I say, to mining as a way of replacing diesel generators. Can also work at uh, in terms of industry for microgrids, construction sites, event organizers as well. The Volt Pack mobile system uh, will deliver up to 250 kilowatts with a scalable capacity from 250 kilowatt hours up to 1,000. 225 kilowatt hours of available stored energy applications like powering remote electricity grids or even reinforcing a weak grid or taking down bits of the grid for maintenance and supporting EV charging at events or at special things that are going on and it looks like the more people that do this the better as well and, and fantastic that we talk about Tesla's storage quite a lot, but more companies are getting into this. And actually, I like the idea of being able to take storage to certain things, like to special events or uh, to an area that needs some extra grid support, maybe while work is being done. Just brilliant. Let's talk about GM a bit more, actually, and their battery chief talking 600-mile EVs and actually talking million-mile batteries, which is the phrase du jour, right? Everyone wants to make a million-mile battery before Tesla make their million mile battery. It seems that if you want to get some publicity these days, uh, just put out a press release about your forthcoming million mile battery and the websites and blogs will absolutely lap it up. Well, there was indeed a, a bit of a call and with some uh, journalists by the look of it with GM talking about the Hummer and the Cadillac Lyric and a new joint venture between GM and LG Chem, the Ultium Cell batteries, and also they're, they're clearing the ground already for the Ohio Battery Factory that is going to make the power packs for those upcoming EVs. Uh, well, Tim Grew is GM's Global Electrification and Battery Systems Director and has been talking about the plant ramp-up and the cells and the new facility and the large format pouch cells they're going to be using and a, and a chemistry which is called a nickel cobalt manganese aluminium chemistry that was developed with GM. Uh, comparing it to existing cells that are out there, lower in cobalt content, but adding aluminium uh, to the cathode, actually, for longer life. So I've got a quote from him, and I'll read it out, and then we can pull it apart at the end and see what you think of it. He said this, and I quote, This is a giant leap forward on the road to low-cost batteries and actually keeping the performance and keeping the range. We've reduced the cobalt content of these batteries, and that's 70% compared to what it was in the Bolt EV. Uh, one cell is used across all of our applications, and all of our vehicles will ensure that they can can take the benefits of manufacturing scale and quality so you can think of it as 100 amp hours which is a big number it's about the same as 20 small cylindrical cells that you may be familiar with so the pouch they're using is larger it's a large pouch and it has a lot of energy it's stored it in it as well and instead of rolling electrodes up and putting them in individual cans or cylinders like you know we talk about tesla doing what they do is they do is they lay them flat and with that flatness they very securely weld them with robust joints to have a long single pouch the beauty of the pouch cell is that you have a plus side and a minus side and that you have two tabs that are connected or welded together with the electrodes there's 20 plus and minuses stacked together in a pouch uh, so it was a fundamental strategy to say how can you disassemble that and not have the cathode and anode mixed together uh, where well, you have to do some chemical process to separate them? You can disassemble the pouch very easily, actually, and take the two tabs, you pull them apart, uh, the cathode in one hand and the anode literally in the other hand, and that enables low-cost recycling at the end of this. So GM obviously keen to talk up their batteries as well and talking about how many cycles you can put through the battery and that is how they get to the million mile battery being in sight. It won't be the last time we hear that phrase as well. So the EU Commission are considering a big aid package 
For cars, the European Union Commission has drawn up some initial proposals for an economic and climate protection package for the transport sector, sector worth 100 billion euros. Among other things, a purchase premium for clean cars is being planned. But it's disputed at the minute which cars are going to be included and excluded, says the website Electrive. A purchase premium uh, could be financed with a 20 billion euro fund over two years. And there are people opposing opinions to this to say, well, what does constitute a clean car? Under certain circumstances, they're currently giving consideration to allowing cars that actually exceed 95 grams of CO2 per kilometre into this bracket of being called a clean car. Needless to say, if any money is being given off EVs, whether that is through a VAT reduction, which is one idea that's being circulated, I see, or just grants or incentives, you've got to start with full EVs. You have to start, you have to, at the top of the list, put full battery electric vehicles, and if there's any money left over at the end, go plug in hybrids, but don't be doing it with soft hybrids, and even just very, very efficient combustion engine cars that still emit a lot. There is a very loud voice of opinion, by the way, out there in in car land that says there's a long way to go yet with combustion and they can make them a lot more efficient. I'm not sure I buy into that, but that's not my job. So there's people out there who know vastly more about where combustion engines can go, and they are calling them clean clean petrol and clean diesel. Let's move on. Final story today. Full electrified vehicle tech and safety regulations have now been issued for motorsport in the UK. Uh, The governing body is that literally called Motorsport UK. Uh, According to Green Car Reports, Motorsport UK reckons it's the first motorsport governing body in the world to develop a full set of regulations in the area of racing electric cars. The framework caters for all types of cars as well. So if you are taking your fully electric car to different grassroots level motorsport, whether that is going to be unmodified or whether it's going to be with some modding, whether it's taking road cars or special race cars, whether you're doing sprint climbs or hill climbs on the road, auto tests or auto solos, there is now a set of regulations here that we can start to put in at grassroots level so that people can go racing and know what the specs are, the safety regulations, the technical regulations, and race electric cars, and not just at those big organised things like Formula E at the very top. That's brilliant news. and Another sign that electric cars are just filtering to so many different bits of the world that I wouldn't, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't find out about if it wasn't for this podcast. Well, thank you for listening today. How do you fancy answering question of the week on Sunday? I would love you to. And we'll read out your answers on Sunday's show. Dyson have pulled out of making EVs after spending half a billion pounds on the project because they couldn't make the car cheaper than 150000 as a purchase price in order to make the car break even and turn a profit. So Dyson canned the project. And I'm asking you, should they have done that? What's wrong with making an EV that's expensive? Should we only make EVs that are now affordable and realistic and attainable for the likes of you and I? What's wrong with making a car that costs 150 k Should Dyson have carried on making the car, or were they right to cancel the project? Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com, or leave a comment on the YouTube show. Well, there are 227 patrons of the podcast who do fund this show, and if you are thinking about having a look at the page uh, patreon is patreon.com slash ev news daily uh, premium partners as always we thank phil roberts of electric future brad crosby avid technology brightsmith group for clean tech talent porsche of the village cincinnati and audi of cincinnati east uh, check out the archive and there's 784 shows in there if you want to find anything about Pretty much anything with EVs and storage and solar and energy, chances are use the search box and you'll find something. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.